Hi everyone, welcome back to Live in Italy magazine. If you've ever been to Sicily or dream of going or want to connect with possibly your descendants and your cultural heritage from Sicily as a very unique spot and place and destination in Italy, you will not want to miss today's interview. I am extremely pleased to welcome Esther Vadja, who is the co-founder of the highly successful YouTube channel, You, Me and Sicily. And we're going to put all the links below. Make sure you subscribe if you're not following them already. I'm going to talk about the evolution of this channel. Most importantly, how they ended up living in Sicily and just everything about their lives there. My name is Lisa Morales and I am the editor of Live in Italy magazine, a travel and lifestyle publication dedicated to all things Is Italy and I will say all things Sicily. Oh Lisa, thank you so much for having me on. It is such a pleasure to be part of this great project. So where do we begin? Yes, yeah, Sicily is unique. Uh, most beautiful island. It, I like to say it's magical, majestic, mysterious, complex, lots of layers uh, to this island because of the thousands of years of influence. This has been a crossroads of cultures, of cuisines, and we are so, so humbled and grateful for the opportunity to share Sicily with the world through our YouTube and our Facebook. Uh, I am not Sicilian. I was born in Hungary and grew up uh, in Massachusetts, right outside of Boston. And uh, Alfred, all four of his grandparents are from a town called Tre Castagni, which is on the Etna uh, villages. So it was already in the works for him. He had been coming and going uh, to Sicily for many years before I met him. So the story of how we met is interesting. In uh, 2013, I went, I moved back uh, to Andover, Massachusetts, where I'm from, from working at the PBS affiliate in North Carolina. And I was um, had my own TV show back in Massachusetts, and I met Alfred's brother, Tom Zappala, through a, a radio show that I was also hosting. So I was doing radio and TV. And one day, Tom Zappala calls me and says, Esther, uh, can you go fill in the show for me? I'm not feeling too good. You'll fill in with Mike Lamazzo. The name of the show, by the way, is The Sicilian Corner. It's still a radio show um, outside of Boston. They're also on Facebook. And the first guest happened to be Alfred Zappala. He was back um, from teaching. He was a law professor at uh, Northeastern University for many years, and he would go back and forth between here, Sicily, for about seven months and then go and teach for about five months. And um, he sat down that day, and I knew very little about Sicily. And he started talking about life in Sicily, about the Sicilian contributions about the fate of civilization sometimes being decided right here on the island. He started talking about uh, some of the chapters and stories of his books, and it was just fascinating. A student of history, as a student of history, I knew very little about this land that has so many people who have come and gone, so many contributions, so many firsts, so many people came from this land. And I turned to him and I said, why don't you come on our uh, my TV show? Uh, let me interview you for the TV. Well, we're in the studio. The lights go off. Our, the crew's taking off the microphone. And we're still talking. We're talking. We're talking. And so we came up with a plan right then and there, let's perhaps um, take, you said to me, take your skills as a journalist, as a video journalist, why don't you come to Sicily for a few weeks and do six or seven episodes. And that was June of 2014 was the first time I came to Sicily. I came here for a month. I ended up staying five months and we were only going 
to do seven episodes. And here we are in 2023, over 300 videos from all over Sicily, the foods, the people, the places, the history, the culture, we cover it all. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that story. And just isn't that kind of funny? how we make connections with people like you were just filling it and look what it's become. So I think the biggest question here, Esther, is, OK, so we already know that you went over to make a TV show, but you're now living in Sicily. How did that come about? Sicily got in my bloodstream. There's something addictive to Sicily. There's <laughs> something about Sicily that gets in your body. And when you're not here and those several months that when Alfred was still teaching and we would go back, we would have a countdown to coming back to Sicily. When we right. would have to pack up and go back to the United States, it'd be like, oh, oh, no, we don't want to go. So um, after Alfred retired in 2016, we decided to make um, it permanent here. The lifestyle here is very different um, than the United States, obviously, and it's a lifestyle that I personally prefer. We're outside the city of Catania in a rural er area, but there's also a lot of farm land here. Uh, the life here is very simple. Uh, mm -hmm. You can hark back to a different era, a century ago. Some places even time stands still, and it hasn't moved for a century. Um, you know, the quality of life here for us is just better. It's the one we prefer. Obviously, the foods you can't even compare. Go to the markets and getting organic fruits, vegetables, the fish right outside from the waters. Um, so that was a big component. And then as part of our YouTube channel, we also have a travel business. So we do tours of Sicily, not only consulting, which I do several times a week. People want to come here to Sicily. They don't know where to start, where to see, what to do, where to stay. I help them put that together. But we also have uh, small group tours of Sicily. But, you know, one of the funnest or uh one of the things that I love doing most is ancestral hometown tours. And we've done several of them, many of them last year, where a family comes to me and says, my family is, for example, Longi in the province of Messina. I definitely want to go visit there. And then can you create a tour that does the must-sees either on the West Coast or East Coast? And so going with this, let's say this family, and I'm thinking of this family that came with us in December 2022, their ancestral hometown was Longi. And of course, we went to all the other highlights, Ortigia, Tarmina, Etna, Ragusa, all these towns. But when they set foot on their ancestral hometown, and in fact, I was able to find the street where the grandfather wow. was born. And you just watching this family and the transformation of walking on the streets where their ancestors walked on is one of the most rewarding parts of my job. Yes. Yes. There's that definite connection to the earth. That was yes. such a great background to all that you've done and getting to Sicily. I just want to backtrack a bit and we'll get into all that a little bit more in depth because I'm very curious about the ancestral and the tours and things that you offer. But let's get back to Alfred because you're here on his behalf. Uh, a couple of months ago, well, of course, by the time you're going to be seeing this video, it won't, it'll be more than a couple of months ago, we did a, uh, a special issue for Italian American Heritage Month, which in the United States is October. So, yeah. Alfred, I'd like to be able to say is a Sicilian American, because like I said, I, from what you say, from what I little I know, is like Sicily is a part of Italy, but also you could see it as a unique entity as well. So I'd like to know, where did Alfred grow up? And tell us a little bit, if you can, whatever you know about his Italian-American, Sicilian-American uh, growing up. So first of all, uh, Italy didn't become a country until 1861. So when you right. think about it, Sicily, we still, we still are an autonomous um, island. So the 20 regions 
of what we call Italy now, yes. we're all scattered. We mm -hmm. all had our different uh, cultures, our different dialects. Of course, here we speak Sicilian is not a dialect. It is an actual language. Uh, but when you think about it, Sicily wasn't part of this union ever. It was part of the Greek uh, empire, the Roman Empire, the Arabs were here, the Normans, you know, so there were many other, it was part of many other cultures. So just, just to clarify that part, um, Alfred was born in Lawrence, Massachusetts. And interestingly, I was born, I was born in Hungary, but I grew up in Andover, Massachusetts, which is the town right next door to Lawrence. So I grew up with a lot of Sicilians because in our region, in the Merrimack Valley, a large number of Sicilians uh, emigrated there. And they're mostly from the Catania, um, Etna areas. And so all four of his grandparents went there. Now, interestingly, in Lawrence, Massachusetts, there's the Feast of St. Alfio Philadelphia Cirino, which is one of the biggest Italian uh, festivals. It is celebrated here in Tre Castagni, which is Alfred's ancestral home. It was his grandfather when he went to Lawrence, Massachusetts. Him and a bunch of Alf other um, uh, family members of Alfred and some other founders who started that festival in Lawrence, Massachusetts. And one and this year, 2023, is the 100th anniversary. Imagine that. 1923. Wow, that is amazing. In Lawrence, Massachusetts, thanks to Alfred's grandfather. Now, Alfred's brother is still very involved. So um, Alfred grew up in a home uh, speaking Sicilian. His grandparents only spoke uh, Sicilian. So it's really fun because he'll go and talk to people here and he'll speak to them in Sicilian. And a lot of them don't speak Sicilian anymore, especially the younger generation. So he had he still speaks a language that is used by many, not some, but not many people here. So he still speaks um, Sicilian. And slowly, slowly, we're both learning um, Italian. So he grew up with the foods uh, that now I'm learning to make here um, in Sicily, like the scacciata, which is the meat pie, the uh, pasta with the sardines, the arancini, which is the rice balls. Right. Um, so that's a little bit. And Alfred Zappola has written four books on Sicily. And what he is really great about his books is that they're a nice little mix of things. So not only does he talk about life here in Sicily and, and you know, all things Sicilian, but he also talks about growing up in a Sicilian household. And uh, one of the, some of the things that he observes to be the same now living here in Sicily. And, and there's a lot of humor. There's a lot of tidbits, a little bit of history, a little bit of that. It's, it's, his books are almost like our, our YouTube channel, a little bit of everything. That's right. Well, they, they sound fascinating. I would definitely look them up. And if there's a link if to online, if they're available online, we'll be sure to share that as well. For sure on Kindle. Okay, that's great to know. So, grandparents from so what you sound because I got there of the Italian American public uh, population, uh, there there are people who like their descendants that go way far back. So it seems that in Alfred's household, being grandparents and speaking the language, that pretty much things remained Sicilian, like even the food in that, because we've talked about how Italian, Italian American cuisine has evolved. Uh, so, yeah. so according to ingredients, is that correct? Then he, his, he was pretty much connected to his Sicilian roots as an American. As an American. Yeah. He grew up in a Sicilian household. His grandparents yeah. spoke Sicilian. They made Sicilian foods for sure. Right. That, that's, that's interesting. That's really interesting. So usually people who want to go back and I presume that this is the case of there is something, you know, the heartstring that pulls you back to the country. So what would you say pulled Alfred back? You said he traveled there many times. So what happened was it was, um, his father was dying. He mm -hmm. was in the hospital and his father had always wanted to come to Sicily 
and never made it. Uh-huh. And when he, when Alfred was at his father's deathbed, he asked him to please go to his ancestral hometown of Tre Castani. And so uh, after Alfred buried his father, he bought a ticket and usually he would be a Rome guy. So he would go to Rome, Rome, Boston, Rome, Boston. He would do that trip often. And it was the first time that he came uh, to Sicily. It was over 20 years ago. And it's funny, the way he describes his first landing is exactly how I felt when I first landed in Fontana Rossa in um, Catania Airport. That when I landed, everything felt at home. Everything felt right. On a very uh, molecular level, I felt that this was the right thing. And he felt the same thing immediately as he landed. And as the days went by and he went to Tre Castagne, and later on he was able to find um, his grandmother's um, home. And he took his 80-year-old mother there as well. Uh, so she finally got to see Sicily. And there was something, and you know, a lot of people say this too, that there's something that gets into your bloodstream Mm. when in Sicily. It's a love affair with the land, with the people, with the history, with the culture, with the entire package of Sicily. There's not just one. In fact, by the time you're watching this, I have already published a video called Why Sicily? And I spent an arduous amount of time picking, nitpicking my words, nitpicking what videos use, because there's something so complex about Sicily. Yeah. There's the juxtaposition of Mount Etna, the sea and the sun, so fire and and life and uh, the agrodolce, the sweet and sour foods, um, the mafia and anti-mafia, the complexity mm-hmm. of going from uh, Catania, which is mainly lava, you know, you see lava on the grounds at some of the buildings, to going an hour south to Ortigia with everything is just beautiful marbles and everything's white, to going another hour south to Ragusa and the buildings are oranges. There's just a complexity here that I that is so difficult, and Alfred and I have talked about this very much. But it, it's a multi layer love affair with Sicily, and right. so what he did after that first year is that he found uh, someone, his now law, still law partner, um, and he started importing um, things to uh, the United States to Lawrence. His company was called all things Sicilian. And for many years, they were the biggest importers and the biggest online um, companies of all things Sicilian. So he did everything from, you know, olive oil to wine, to water, to Sicilian carts, to everything and so forth. And um, so he was already, you know, established a base here. He was still Uh teaching, established um, a lot of contacts and and a base here. And, um, and, it, and once he retired in 2016, it just made sense to stay here. And um, and then, you know, we had our business was growing. A YouTube channel started to grow. We started rec- uh, receiving lots of requests for tours. And then we said, okay, well, it makes sense to do maybe two or three organized small group tours and then let other people, you know, do uh, private and customize. So, um he says he's retired, but he's really not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I hear that from many retirees. And as we approach that to age two, you know, like it's like, ah, I can never imagine just totally retiring. But that's great. It's just, but what happens is it sounds like with this, you know, retirement, he can totally pursue his passion and what, what he wants to do. So let's talk about, because you're a journalist. Obviously, uncovering, unraveling stories. Now you have you have fostered this deep connection to Sicily. So let's talk a little bit, and I know you addressed this in at least one of your videos. Let's talk about, and I think this is Alfred's passion as well, 
is the stereotype. And it's so funny. I was interviewed about, well, right when we began by an Italian uh, from Rai, R-A-I, in Italy. And he asked me about, you know, do Americans all think about like the mafia and stuff like this? So as a journalist, like how strong is it for you? Because we should not by now still kind of be thinking Sicily, mafia, the godfather. How strong is that compelling for you to be able to really get the right message out there? One of the reasons, one of our initial missions of You, Me and Sicily was to dispel those very stereotypes mm -hmm. of the mafia. And believe it or not, not only do we continue to do that, but the Sicilians have told us and are so thankful that we are, and I quote uh, a guy that I interviewed several years ago, thank you, Esther and Alfred, for dispelling the myths about the Godfather, that we are not just mafia, we are yeah. good people, we are giving people, we are generous people. So I have heard firsthand from Sicilians how thankful they are of, uh, for us doing that. In 2016, we had the opportunity to um, to go to the prison where the uh, maxi trials, the maxi trials were mm -hmm. uh, trials that were held in the 80s um, by the heroes, judges um, Giovanni Falcone and Paolo Borsellino, who were two heroes who were murdered by the mafia. Right. And we did a lot of interviews with the anti-mafia movement that is very strong here in mm -hmm. Sicily. But the fact is that that stereotype continues. One of the most wanted men and the end of the Costa Nostra, the big mafia bosses, uh, Matteo Donato was just arrested um, in Palermo. And so unfortunately, uh, the mafia and you know so all the uh mafia stereotypes are starting again because it's all over the news that he was arrested he was on the run for 30 years and he was hiding out right here in uh palermo but he's the last of the big mafia bosses the old ones the big capos that was arrested which is you know it, it is good news uh the mafia as my girlfriend Stefania says many times, there's mafia in every Sicilian. It's a mindset and it's been around for so many generations that it's just passed down. When I say mafia mindset, okay, um, you know, there the mafia still exists on a very low level. So for instance, our pizzeria, which is right down the street from us, is on a major crossroads and we've been going there for eight years it's free parking but inevitably there'll be a guy there i'll watch your car i'll watch your car for a euro that's what i mean low level mafia that still exists here it still exists here on a little bit higher level it's not as criminal in terms of violent as it was in the 80s when when it was violent here, the mafia was, there was a lot of uh, killings and it was a violent component. It is more of a business mafia and it exists mm -hmm. here. Um, it's in the papers all the time, uh, extortion, money laundering, so forth. Unfortunately, it's still a part. But do you know which area of Italy arguably has an even bigger mafia organization is Calabria? Right. So the mafia here has, you know, it's it's, you know, uh, gone through many changes, let's say. So that that violent uh, arm of the mafia is not as prevalent here now. It's it's more of a business. And as I said, the anti-mafia is very, very strong. Um, a lot of restaurants started this movement. No, non pago pizza. I don't pay the um, the back pay. Mm -hmm. um, one of the uh, owners of one of the Condorelli, Condorelli uh, does, um, they're out of Belpaso and they do the nougats, you know, mm -hmm. for Christmas, the nuggets. 
um, the owner held a press conference and said, I'm being forced to pay uh, the mafia and I stand here publicly saying I'm against it and I'm calling out those people uh, that are forcing me, you know, extortion, whatever it was. So there are people standing up against the mafia. And when we went to um, to do the anniversary of the two judges, which is May 23rd, is the anniversary of uh, the assassination of Giovanni Falcone, we met a lot of people doing anti-mafia programs like offering music or to teenagers or offering some kind of um, horseback riding, boating, things, activities for the teens so they don't get into that type of activity, you know, criminal activity, much like the gangs in the United States. It's right. th those times. So people are speaking out against it. Now, the president of the Republic of Italy is Sergio Mattarella. He is a Sicilian, one of the most outspoken people against the mafia. His brother was the uh, mayor of Palermo. He was assassinated by um, the mafia. So for the president of the Republic to be a Sicilian of a victim of the mafia says a lot too about the push against this cancer, as Sergio Mattarella often says in his speeches, he calls it the cancer of Italy. Right. And, and, and thank you for shedding so much light on that, because I think that anybody who um, thinks about Sicily, it's still in the back of their mind. Like, is it a safe place to travel? Does this exist? Or maybe they go just to follow, you know, in the footsteps of the Godfather kind of thing. And, and, and I think what you do and when you, the people, some of the people you have interviewed, it seems to be a strong collective effort to eliminate that stereotype, to get people to really become like emotionally invested in what Sicily has to offer. Right. So let me just tell you, so a couple of things on that. We, we do have people, we do see people um, that want to do the Godfather tour. You know, they want to go to all the places that were uh, shown. But there's one town, uh, two towns called Savo and Forza de Agro that are um, in some of the scenes. I take my groups there, not because they're in the Godfather, but because they're quaint, small, quintessential small uh, towns where, as I said before, time stands still. It's in a different um, era and very beautiful, picturesque. The panoramas from Savoca and Forza de Agro are just majestic. And um, there are places like Barbatelli, for example, in Savoca, with a few um, famous scenes were uh, filmed there, that do try to capitalize that the godfather um stay there i go to the cafe right across the street so um there is still unfortunately that stereotype i interviewed um alessandro and now i'm uh, drawing a name a uh, blank on his name it was in 2015 and he was head of the babylonia language school in taramina and I remember interviewing him, and and we were talking about the uh, about the mafia and the stereotypes, and 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 he spoke so passionately about all the contributions Sicily has, and and but Americans or you know Canadians people come here and they all all want to know what, about the Godfather, Godfather, and he was so upset. And then I said to him, well, "What do you want um, finally to happen?" He said. I want that my kid, he has a, he had a 14-year-old back then, when he travels around the world, the people don't stop him and say, are you mafioso? The people don't stop him and say, is your family from the mafia? And unfortunately, those things still happen. I'll tell you one yeah. quick, another quick story about of course. that. Our, uh, we have vineyards all over the place that we uh -huh. take our clients to. But one of the first videos I did was at a vineyard, and the name was Gambino. 
Now, Francesco and Andrea are very good friends of ours, but I will never forget our meeting. And of course, we have a video on this. And they were telling the story about how they went to New York City and met with some distributors. Uh, Gambino, by the way, is the uh, last name of their mom. Mm -hmm. And the distributor said, oh, I love your wine. It just, I think this will sell. This is great wine, blah, blah, blah. But would you consider changing the name of your wine? Because Gambino, you know, it has that connotation about stereotypes. The two brothers looked at each other and got up. We're not doing business with you. We're not changing the name of our company, my mother's last name, because some Americans have this stereotype look. Now, here we are, nine years later, they're one of the most popular, one of the biggest vineyards up here uh, in Lingua Glossa in Etna. And yeah. good for them. Yeah, and of course. Good for them. I mean, and it's like you said, it's their family name after all. Why should they yeah. hide that? Yeah. So Sicilians going elsewhere do experience that. Unfortunately, it still yeah. happens. Well, you're making changes too. And, and, and of course, our mission is to expose authentic Italy, Sicily. So, yeah, let's, uh, I think, you know, uh, keep that effort going. And, of course, you're doing it so well. And that's all we can do because, you know, along with the spelling stereotypes, our goal was to educate people about Sicily, right. educate. And that's, that's what we do through entertaining, hopefully entertaining and visually yeah. beautiful videos. But to be quite honest with you, even putting together this, the videos mm -hmm. and I, I do the filming and so forth. I stand there. And I have visited certain spots 100 times, I kid you not, because throughout the year, let's say, for example, Tarmina or TJ, all the, you know, the towns over on the East Coast where we live, mm -hmm. I go maybe 20, 30 times with different groups. I can honestly tell you, Lisa, that at different times of the year, different hours, I am always just my breath taken away from a lot of these places that I have visited multiple times. And the videos, the pictures, they just don't do it justice. Right. Because to be here, to, to smell the air, to hear the sounds of the people, of the, of, of the nature, you know, because Sicily is really an outdoor museum too, right? Right. Um, not only beautiful Greek ruins, Roman villas, so forth, but also beautiful. The biodiversity on some of the mountain ranges are just breathtaking. So, you know, as much as we try to teach and show people really coming here is a different story. So let's talk about the other aspect that you do, obviously, and you've said this to yourself and what I found kind of so touching is the fact that you acknowledge the fact that what you've been able to do through the videos has been for people who can't necessarily travel. It could be economics, it could be their age, it could be any reason you've created that thing. But I also see on your website, uh, Yumi and Sicily, that, that you offer some chores, some in-person um, interactions for people who, who want to, who are tired of watching videos and want to get there. Tell us what you offer. So we have one of the component is um, tour consulting. So if someone wants to come here, I help them map out where to go, where to stay, uh, what to eat, <laughs> very important, um, where to, uh, you know, accommodations, transportation, um, the vineyards, we have a uh, Sicilian cart museum, we have a ricotta tasting, we have an olive farm, we have, all, we offer all of that. Now, we also have group tours several times a year, we mm -hmm. offer group tours, so we have a set um itinerary and all of that is on our website youmeandsicily.com and so what happens a lot of times interesting is that people will take the tour and then either come a few days before or stay a few days later and go to their ancestral hometowns that happens very often and then the other type of tour we have are the boutique customized tours right so someone comes to me and 
you know, I, I made the example of laundry. Last year, we also had a family, um, um, Philip, uh, from uh, Polizzi Generosa. His grandfather was Polizzi Generosa, and it was his dream to bring him, his wife, his sister, uh, his nieces, all on one trip. So nine, nine of them, and him and I went back and forth. Polizzi Generosa was, of course, on um on the list of uh, places to go. But then he said, Esther, just put together a 10 day tour with me, you know, focusing on some of the must sees. Um, so I did that and we worked together and it was really customized. We included a cooking demo. We included a vineyard. Uh, we included, of course, visits to many of the beautiful places. And, and I have done that uh, several times. And as I said, that's one of the most rewarding. Last year, we also took a woman to Lantini. Now, by the way, it doesn't have to be a group. We've had single travelers. We've had couples. Yeah. We've had fours. We have six. Um, and uh, so we had a Lantini, a Drano, a Termini e Meresi. There were two people from Termini e Meresi. So they contact us and say, this is what I'm thinking. Um, and I try to make their dreams come true. And so ah. far, so far, uh, people have told me that their dreams have come true. I'm thinking specifically right now of a woman named Candace, and she was um, from Adrano, his grandfather. And again, I told her, give me as much information as you possibly can. Let's see what I can find there. So she said, you won't believe this. She said she remembers her grandfather talking about a tobacco shop, that they were near a tobacco shop or next to a tobacco shop. And when he was young, um, his grandmother, when he would, would misbehave, she would hit him. Uh, this is in Pennsylvania. Uh, she would hit him and he would run up to the a steeple of the church. So I'm like, oh, my God, Adrano is not a small town. Can you give me a little bit of something else? Yeah, he used to talk about walking uh, from his house to the mother church and then having coffee right next to the church and it would only take him one or two minutes. So we get to Adrano and I've been to Adrano before because it's an ancestral hometown of another woman um, that we took there. And so I knew there was a tabacaria. I couldn't remember if it was near a church or where it was. So I said, Candace, we're going to go uh, to the tabacaria. And I got there and I was like, wait, didn't you tell me that your grandfather used to run to uh, the church and run up all the people? Wait a sec. There's a church right here. Mm -hmm. Then I looked down I'm like, wait a second, Candace, there's um, the alleyway. You said he went down an alleyway to go to the mother church and then he had coffee or they had um, yeah. breakfast there. So then I go into the tabacaria and I said, would you happen to know the last name of uh, Candace's grandfather? I can't remember. She goes, wait a second. That sounds familiar. Let me call my dad. So she's calling her dad. Her dad says, of course, they lived on this street. I found wow. the street. I found the street. They lived on the street. So we went. So the father came down um, from uh, wherever he, uh, he was, he's over there. All of a sudden, people are gathering on <laughs> the street and we're going, do, do you know the so-and-so? Did you know the so, so Oh, yes, they live down there. Oh, yes, I knew him. I knew the family. It's crazy. Candace, whatever house was right next to Bakaria, she was touching it. Then she went to the church where... Um, where his grandfather allegedly ran away from the grandmother. She stood there crying. Esther, I can't believe you made my dream come true. I can't. And she was touching the church. She didn't want to leave. I, she didn't. She didn't. I had to pull her away from it. She didn't want to leave. It was one of the most satisfying, but it happens all the time that we wow. were able to find some kind of a connection to people. And that just warms my heart. Oh, that's rewarding. So all uh, that, I mean, that just must be Can you even the true that? payoff for everything you've done. Like I, I have goosebumps. Yeah, that that's amazing. Amazing story, Esther. So yeah, making people's dreams come true. I love that. Their Sicilian dreams come true. So 
uh, let me know because I'm visiting your website and also the YouTube channel because there are so many, like, I mean, everything you want to know, Cicely, is on their channel. And, but one thing is that you talk about helping people connect to their ancestors. So are you saying that if somebody wants to have you create a video so they're not able to get there, is that what you do? Give, give me some history on that. That's that's another thing. We started that in 2015, where it's called the ancestral uh, hometown videos, where right. if someone uh, would like us to visit their town, uh, perhaps they have a family which has happened before that has uh, some kind of a shop will feature the shop uh, will feature the family. Um, but really, um for anyone, we've had people give it as a birth, 80th birthday gift to go to ancestral hometown uh, in twenty, you know, twenty twenty. I went to Shefalu, um, and I've been to Shefalu many times, but this was an ancestral hometown and was dedicated to this woman, Leone, I believe was her name, um, mother who was turning eighty, and the mother still to this day. Uh, is one of our biggest fans. And so that she was so thankful for this gift. Uh, so that is something we also do where we can go to some town uh, anywhere around Sicily and feature it as part of our ancestral hometown videos. And through this, Lisa, I have to tell you, so there are the towns that must see when on the West Coast or East Coast of Sicily, but through this series of ancestral hometowns, we've gotten to go to some of the coolest, out of the way, off the beaten path towns. So, so uh, fulfill, uh, rewarding and fulfilling also to do those types of um, videos because it just goes back to me saying, Sicily is an endless treasure trove. Endless, yeah. endless, endless. And, and the, your audience, the people who are discovering you, are helping you rediscover things over and over again in, in unique ways. That's amazing. Let me just tell you this quick story about the town of Malili. So Malili, um, someone contacted us and said, go to Malili. I'm like, where's Malili? Okay, it's in the province of Siracusa. We go up there. It's a little, it's not on a mountain, but let's say hilltop. The air is so fresh and clean. The streets, you know, small cobblestone streets, um, beautiful, friendly people. Uh, and we found the Duomo dedicated to San Sebastiano. Beautiful cathedral. It turns out after we, you know, I did some research and after we published the video, mm -hmm. dozens of people from Middleton, Connecticut, contacted us and said, the people that left Malili in the province of Syracuse who went to Middleton, uh, Connecticut, built an exact replica of the Church of San Sebastiano here in Malili. And they celebrate the Feast of San Sebastiano on the same day that they celebrate it here in Malili. It turns out there's a big population in Middleton, Connecticut. How funny is that? Wow. <laughs> never would I never did I hear of Malili. And the funniest thing is that uh the mayor of one of the towns near where I live also contacted me and said, I'm from Malili. I said, Mayor Fiorentino, why didn't you ever tell me? Oh, because no one knows of Malili. <laughs> No one knows of Malili, except for the people of Middleton, Connecticut. And if you're from Malili, it's a small little town, but it right. was a cool little discovery. Yeah, definitely. So fascinating. So I think we pretty much covered everything we have to offer, but I'm a little curious because Alfred being an attorney, not retired, retired, <laughs> I believe <laughs> um, he's helping people legally because this is something that comes up. And I yeah. know, uh, yeah. you know, whether it's, you know, buying a home or citizenship. I mean, we get mm -hmm. questions all the time. We're not in any position to give advice, obviously. What does Alfred do for people who, exactly let's say, want to live in Italy, uh, you know, uh, move there, citizenship, uh, citizenship by all descent, anything like that? Tell us. All of that. 
and it doesn't have to be by and that is one of them the scent is one of them of course uh but he does all of that he does um he does uh coaching you on how to get your citizenship uh because there are you know you can qualify in many ways actually um and uh, he also helps with buying property, him and uh, Massimo, who's the law partner who he worked with, all things Sicilian, over 25 yeah, years Yeah, we'll link ago. one of those videos, too, because that's very yeah. interesting, What your interview with Massimo. And uh, so he does any kind of legal issue. Um, he's the American lawyer, and Massimo is the... Um, Right. Is the Sicilian. Uh, but they do not only work here in Sicily, but all over Italy. Okay. So that's good yeah. to know. Yeah. That's great. Uh, so, a question, because I, I don't really know. So, um, we, we were just talking about, what were we talking about just recently in an interview about Italian language requirements? So, if you're going to do your naturalization in Sicily, you, your, your language requirement is still going to be you know, proper Italian as it's taught in the schools, not Sicilian, right? Italian is the official governmental mm -hmm. school and business language of Italy, correct? Right. Yeah. Are you an Italian citizen? I, because I was born in Hungary, right. I have my Hungarian uh, passport and American passport, so I'm a dual citizen. Um, and because Hungary is in the EU, I'm able yes. to stay there. But I do have... I am a resident. I'm, you know, I have my carta d'identità. I have my health insurance. I have my bank account. I, you know, so I, I do. I am a resident. I'm a official resident um, of Sicily. Yes. Which kind of leads us into our final section, which is kind of our chat with an expat section. And I always say this: it was a cute title that rhymed. Some people don't like the word expat. And Esther and Alfred have produced a very interesting video that maybe might kind of uh, fall into this category about adjusting to life in Italy, about exactly what you're talking about, getting your, your carta identita, is patience is a virtue. Correct? Like sometimes we have Amen. to read, especially Amen. you growing up in the United States being American, or I've heard, you know, in the UK is like, we're just so go, go, go. And has to be like this, this, this. And, and, you know, it could turn into a completely frustrating experience. Right. Yeah. And people have given up. Um, it, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's bureaucracy. It's time consuming. Expect the unexpected. Every community does things differently. Bring patience. But in the end, I think if you really want to become a citizen, it does pay off for sure. But Lisa, having said that, you know, you can still do the 30 days here. I mean, excuse me, 90 days here and then right. 90 days back. You, there's still that. But um and you don't have to be a citizen to buy property. So there's a lot of stuff in there, uh, but I'll let the attorneys. Yeah, uh, that's a conversation for another day because that comes up a lot a too. Yes. Yeah, that's a conversation for another day. But um, but life here in, in um, Sicily, Lisa, I was um, I worked for ABC affiliates in um, all over the United States before I uh, worked for PBS in North Carolina journalists go 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 deadlines time blah 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 you've got to when coming here put all of that aside and it wasn't very difficult for me i mean i would get even still i get a little bit frustrated when someone says five minutes and it's 20 minutes or one day and it's a week or i'll get i'll get back to you subido becomes me hunting out after them or you know we're an island life yeah. goes a little bit slower here you know life goes a little bit slower something interesting at the supermarket this will ha this happens all the time at the supermarket you'll see one um checkout guy is open and the line is getting long and long and long and before you know it he gets with the customer and they're starting to discuss how she will prepare the fish. And this mm -hmm. conversation, despite the fact that there's a line, will continue. 
despite the fact <laughs> that I may be having to go somewhere. No, we have to discuss how the fish is made. And once I got past the, oh, I got to be there. I have things to do, blah, 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 blah. And just sat there and listened to this beautiful exchange on how to prepare the piece of fish or whatever it was. Then it became just, okay, it, this is how they are. This, this is Sicily. Things are slower. Expect the unexpected. And uh, don't come with expectations. <laughs> Yeah, and and we've we've been told that before. I remember one woman that said, "I made the choice to move here, so it's not my decision to try. It's not my role to try and change things." Right, and and that's the way you have to look at it. And I think you know, especially us from the United States, we're not always in a position to think. You know, we're immigrants, kind of thing. We you know we're used to being the country that welcomes immigrants. So you've got to think about that. Put your in, your yourself in the shoes of an immigrant, and this is how you adjust. You you're adopting your new country. So I want to hear from you in your words. What is your definition of an expat? Well, I, not really an expat because. Mm -hmm. Lisa, I still have roots in Massachusetts. I go right. back two times a year. I still have a car there. I still have stuff at my mom's house. <laughs> um, you know, I still vote. I still do that. Um, and, you know, I've lived all over the world. I was mm -hmm. born in Hungary. I lived in Israel. I lived in Brazil. Um, I spent a lot of times all over, a, a lot of... Uh, time all over the world traveling india singapore so forth so i don't know this term of expat i'm not I'm not fond of it fond. okay that's okay that's what i told you so many people are not fond um, of it. but you know i'll always be a straniero americana here mm -hmm. um but sicily has welcomed me with an open arm this is my home. This is um, my home is here and where my mom is. Um, I have very good friends. I have dear, dear friends here. We have a uh, wide and deep um, connection to a lot of people, a lot of businesses, obviously because of the work we do, the hotels, the the mm -hmm. you know, the drivers, the restaurants. But over the years, a lot of them have become very good friends. Um, we socialize with them. We've got, I have a family here that I call my Sicilian family. The The wives are my sisters. I We do things together all the time. We spend Christmases together if we're not back in the United States. So, you know, I'm not sure how to answer that. Yeah, I, 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 I think, I you know, I mean, that. no, but uh, you are not um, unique. I think it's like, you know, being a part of two worlds. That's that that's your existence. You know, you you're, you're you haven't left behind. No, no, no. Where that's you're from I'm at all. Mm -hmm. I'm not an expat because I, I mean, if you think just, you know, at my how do I take in news routine, my daily morning and let's say mid afternoon evening routine of what do I look like? You bet I'm looking at all the outlets um, in the United States. I'm right. not going to say the outlets. <laughs> you bet I'm looking at at the Italian outlets, the uh, and the European and the American outlets. Of course, of course, right. I'm not really an expat. Having a foot in two worlds, it was the right way to describe it, Lisa. Yeah, definitely. And I like that. And I, I think I think that's that that's the way it should be. If if you are moving to Italy or thinking about living there long term, you know, you shouldn't I think in order to make a great decision, and that'll be my next decision, is is not to feel like you're escaping from where you are. It, it's gotta be a bigger why decision. You should come. Exactly. And that's not why you should come. You should come because you either have a connection to the land and you want and and we have many people in our and i'm thinking about 
this woman, Jody and Jerry, Jody, by the way, what came on our my very first tour with her in 2015, she came here, fell in love with Cicely. The next year she came back, went to her ancestral hometown. That, no, 2017. So two years later, came back, went to her ancestral hometown, made a decision. She wants to uh, move to Italy in 2019 and become a citizen early 2019. Guess what? She's here. She lives about two hours from us um, and she became a citizen. And now she's looking uh, at buying property. So that was her That's dream. Great. She made it come true. Now we do hear a lot of people, Lisa, that do not like the situation in the United States or. Right. You know, and that's what I was kind that of getting is at. Not a reason. Yeah. That no. Is not the reason yeah. Um, and then let me tell you on that note, Lisa, uh -huh. that there's, there's, you know, what happening here. Don't, mm -hmm. <laughs> don't think that bureaucracy <laughs> and, and shenanigans don't happen here. We've got the, <laughs> how many governments that we had, since 1945, they can't keep a government in place. Yeah, it's complicated. <laughs> it's complicated. It's not simple here. Shenanigans happen everywhere. Yeah, of course. That's true. So so I'm sure you have to give advice to people on a daily basis. But for our audience, what do you think are the key things that you feel are necessary to adjust when making the decision to move to Italy. What is most important in order to adapt? When we are not talking about people who want to move there and just stay with expats, English speaking from their native country in a resort. We're talking about people who say, I want to move to Italy. I want that authentic experience. I want to be immersed in the country. What advice would you give them or the key things? Because I'm sure there's plenty. So one of the things is because I have moved to so many countries and moved so much, so many cultures and so forth, for me, it wasn't that difficult to adapt. Also because I'm from Hungary, so I'm European. So I, so I grew up in a European uh, household. You know, I get this, the mentality and, and the way uh, people are here. Uh, I think one of the most important things, you won't believe this, I think learning the language is should be you. You won't be able to learn it. You can take classes, do online, but but online. But coming here and just being open to learning the language. I'm not fluent in it. And say the name I, of the language because I looked it up. Is it Sicilianu or how how do you say it properly to say no, no, speaking no. Sicilian? No, Sicilian. You don't want to learn Sicilian. You want to learn okay. Italian. Okay, Sicilian. all right. Sicilian is the language of Sicily. It's not a dialect. It's a language of Sicily. But you want to, the most people here speak Italian. Italian is the okay. official, official language. You want to yes. add a little bit. I think it wasn't difficult, but I think it would help people if they had a little bit of conversation Italian. So when mm -hmm. they go to, especially the small non-touristy mom and pop places they don't speak any english right a little bit of italian will help you mm -hmm. um it just it will help you um for me it was very easy that that's that's just one you know but i, I very quickly uh learned italian because i would force myself to go out and interact with people daily if right. it's not in the market then people you know, and people, um, so I would force myself to immerse myself. I think that's an important word, immerse yourself. Put away the Google Translate and really force yourself right. to speak to speak the language. Um, Lisa, it wasn't, um, like I said, it wasn't that difficult for me to adjust. Mm -hmm. Maybe... Um, you know, as we talked before about the patients, because things don't operate here like they should be. We were supposed to have high speed internet six months ago. We're still waiting for the appointment <laughs> for the guy to come <laughs> and call it. That type yes. of stuff. But you know, the, you know, there's problems all over the world with of with, course 
yeah. with, with things. So it's just adjusting to that mentality and understanding that things are not mm-hmm. going to happen overnight. Expect the unexpected. Right. Come with a lot of patience. But in the end, everything else is well worth it. I do have to say that we've done a couple of videos, what we miss about mm-hmm. the United States. And really, they're so minor and inconsequential. And most of it, honestly, has to do with Alfred misses his lobster. I miss Thai food. <laughs> Well, you go, you went ahead and answered one of my favorite questions at the end as we wrap up. And it, it's almost always food, especially if you are from a region that you're not in a big city in Italy where you can get Thai food or Japanese food, whatever you want, uh, you, you know, it's not the same. <laughs> but, and it's but not there's the nothing same. wrong with that. It can be simple. No. Sometimes it yeah, is I the mean, simplest things we miss. But I, it's not like, oh, I really, really miss it. Right. I go home two times a two or three times a year and right. Right. So yeah. uh I prefer at the end of the day, I prefer my life here. Mm-hmm. Um and that's a choice that I made, that we made. Right. So um you will I have to kind of answer on behalf of both of you but in let's say the next five to ten years where what are your goals as far as um what you do everything from the channel everything. to the tours everything. Where, where would you like to see you your yourself go well obviously with the channel we will continue to provide free videos for people mm-hmm. weekly um i generally publish Sunday at 10 a.m. EST, Eastern Standard Time, so 4 p.m. here. You can count on a video unless something happens, plus some bonus videos. Um, we're extending, we're expanding a little bit um, there to, you know, the number of times that we publish, but for sure, every Sunday. And that Sunday time slot, by the way, started during the pandemic, where we would go live. We don't do too much live anymore every Sunday to keep people updated to what's happening right. uh, in Sicily. Uh, majority of them, of course, Americans and Canadians, although we have um, an audience everywhere. And we would just chit chat about Sicily and people would say, this this is better than going to church, listening to YouTube, <laughs> <laughs> YouTube bicker and talk over each other, but also have conversations about yeah. life in Sicily, the latest COVID updates. And stuff yeah, like well, people great. wanted to know. Yeah, that was great uh, resource to have because, you know, people wanted to be able to travel. They wanted to know. I mean, lockdown was, you know, very strict and serious. So, you know, yeah, that's yeah. great. So we kept, but, you know, even before that, we already had the ancestral hometown videos where we would go. Mm-hmm. We would have chats, but it, the format has uh, uh, evolved. Um, I'm really happy and excited. And we both, I know I speak for Alfred as well about the direction of our YouTube channel and and the people that we're able to uh, reach and so forth. We have over 10,000 subscribers, almost 2 million hours of watch time. So we're very excited about that. Same with our Facebook. We have over 30,000 followers, uh, very dedicated followers who have been with us since 2014. And I can name some of them because when I see the comments, you know, I yeah. know who they are. I know who they are. Um, with their tour business, you know, Lisa, um, thank God uh, 2022 was a very good year for yes. us. Um, we were able to do, besides our regular tours, a lot of these small tours where you know, I or someone uh, that works with us is able to accompany them and witness this, um, what happens to people when they visit Sicily. And besides, you know, the ancestral hometown um, video or visits to these towns, the oohs and the ahs are what make me happy. Oohs when seeing uh, or ah, when seeing something just unbelievably breathtaking, beautiful, or, or ooh, this is the most delicious 
dot, dot, dot I've ever had in my life. I've had several, several people say, this is my favorite, this, this is my favorite. Th oh, I've never tasted anything like this. Oh my God. I didn't like sweets until I tasted this. Oh, I thought I hated fish until I had this. Endless. So it's that type of experience and amplifying those types of experiences to the next level is my goal. Love it. And you'll do it. Amazing what you both of you have done. So one final question before we wrap it up. And then of course, for anybody who doesn't know how to follow, uh, find you, we'll, we'll, we'll put that too at the end. But besides Sicily, I'm sure you've traveled uh, throughout Italy. Is there any place that you and Alfred like to go or favorite place or a place to escape? Yeah. <laughs> Where is that? Rome. Rome. Ah. The Eternal City. The Eternal ah. City. Yeah, we wrong. almost went, we almost went, uh, we've gone a few times for Christmas, uh, but we had a tour this year and the, um, the year before. And also to that, I think the last time we went for Christmas was 2018, maybe. So, but we love to escape to the Eternal City and um, they have great Chinese food there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, there you go, you know, big city, a little bit of food diversity. <laughs> Yes, just a, a change of pace. Um, and uh, I well, go to Budapest. That's a big change of pace, isn't it? <laughs> you know, slow, slower Sicily and fast Rome. <laughs> well, you know, there are some cities. Palermo is right. New York on, on, you know, steroids. You've got Catania as a city, but Rome right. is different. I go to Budapest a lot to see. Mm -hmm. I still have family there. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, and then to the United States two, three times a year. But I have to tell you, I still haven't seen all of Sicily. There's so much more to explore, yeah, exactly. especially amazing. this year. Uh, in 2021 uh, was the first time I went to one of the Aeolian Islands. So the Aeolian Islands are the, those volcanic right. uh, islands off of uh, the coast. I went to Selena. I was taken to the next level of breathtaking. <laughs> So there are a couple more islands that I want to explore. So in terms of that, uh, there's also some still little treasures here in Sicily that I would like to see that I haven't seen. But slowly, piano, piano, I'm adding to that list yeah. of half piano. scenes. Very good. Well, it was a delight, Esther, to speak with you. So thank you so uh, much. What a great discovery your channel. So please tell us once again. How to find you and Alfred's you, channel. Mm -hmm. You, me, and Sicily. That's it. Yeah, Facebook, so YouTube, easy. Instagram, and we have a website. Yes. Yeah. And that's worth exploring. So anything that we've talked about today, you go more in depth in your website. But most importantly, yes. please subscribe to the channel. You, I mean, I love it. You will enjoy you. this thank escape you. Thank you. Thank you. virtual trip to Sicily. And I can't wait. I mean, I have never been to Sicily. I just, uh, you know, I mean, the only way that I know Sicily is through Sicilian wine because I, I'm a wine geek. Uh, you know, I have a bottle open What's right favorite? now of Etna Rosso, <laughs> you know. So, yes, Catarato, I love. Um, so I am, and actually I am uh, testing, uh, I won't say the brand because we don't do that, but you know, I'm testing a Marsala because I'm going to a Sicilian wine tasting for business next week. Uh, so that is very new to me. So as we wrap up, I am running to the only place that I know in South Florida that I can find Sicilian cheese and food and things like that. See if I can find a suitable pairing for that Marsala, but that does not replace the opportunity to go in person. We will definitely connect. Please, awesome. if you are interested in connecting with Sicily with your heritage, look them up. And if you can, take a tour, customized tour. Thank you, Esther. Thank you. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. Alla prossima.